All right, now we're inside the greenhouse. Um, we're here in these pots. We've got mainly two varieties of uh, tomatoes. I've got a Siberian tomato and a glacier tomato. Now these are determinants. This is the first time I've ever tried to grow determinants. But they're supposed to be uh, cold resistance. Now what that means, I don't really know yet. But, uh, so I'm going to grow them. I may put one or two of them out, or one of each variety outside uh, as it starts getting a little colder and see if it goes. Some of them are already blooming. I don't think they'll put it on tomatoes. They might, they might not. I don't know. I'm going to go ahead and put some uh, fertilizer in there that uh, kind of helps with the uh, development of the tomatoes more than just growth. But uh, initially I was going to grow these and put them outside uh, a couple months ago, but uh, when I started the seeds, they... Uh, just didn't uh, do well. They they all germinated, all came up, but uh, they stayed really small, even with uh, sunlight and everything else on them. Uh, so I then finally decided I transferred them over into some uh, like little three-inch pots. They really perked up and took off, and uh, then I moved them into this. So anyway, like I said, this is that. You can see my wife's been decorating around here. She likes her little signs and stuff. And like I said, this greenhouse, it'll do for the rest of this year. I'm not even going to trim these edges here. At one time, I used to have electricity in here. Uh, I'm going to wait. I don't know. I may hook something back up that way. That cord goes out to where I can tie it into a power supply. And I may do it where I can put a plug in there. Uh, because I'm going to start germinating in here uh, probably in uh, December. So I'm going to start uh, trying to germinate some seeds, bring them up. And so I've got a germination mat and stuff. And uh, the other thing I could do in here, I'm not going to try to heat this entire greenhouse from germinating. I can rig up a deal like I got this board here and put some plastic down and make a greenhouse with inside of a greenhouse and then just heat that plastic there. Now, this is going on to the new uh, greenhouse. Let me see if I can zoom in or out here. Okay, so I'm out as far as I can go. Uh, this is wiggle wire track and uh, I got this off of Amazon. It's 20 pieces, so that's 130 feet. Uh, it may be, an, it's definitely enough to do this the way I want to do it. And it may be enough to do it when I expand it 10 foot wide. What I won't have enough of is the wiggle wire that came with it. I'll have to buy some new ones. And so, this came with the wiggle wire. And uh, 20 pieces of crack. They're six and a half feet long. And I gave like $84 and something for them. I think it was. Because uh, they had it where I could get a little, like, five bucks off or something. Uh, it comes with screws that I'm not going to use. These are uh, tech screws uh, used for metal. And I wouldn't... Uh, Press those on this. So I'll put these in my screw supply. And uh, what I got is, let's see here. I found these on Amazon too. Oh, by the way, I bought these on Amazon because it was cheaper. These are for these are Vevor. This is the second thing I brought from Vevor, and uh, I've, I've been pleased both times. Uh, but the 20 pack was cheaper on Amazon than it was on the Vivar website. So anyway, uh, let's see if I can get this open. Alright, so what, what these are, is these are inch and a quarter uh, pocket hole screws. they got the little washer on them, smooth on the top, and uh, these are coated for outdoor use. 
so these will be this is what I'm going to use for the uh, hold the wiggle wire track down when I rebuild the greenhouse now uh, that's 300 pieces so I don't know if that's 299 screws and one driver <laughs> you know because you know how they do that but either way it goes maybe the, the box counts as a piece so let's say there's 298 <coughs> excuse me I got 130 foot of wiggle wire here so if, if I put one of those screws every foot in here I would only use 130 and if I put an extra one at the end to start with that's 20 more if I use all 20 pieces so 150 so about half the box I got plenty of that and one thing I am going to try later is I'm going to take uh, one of these pieces of wiggle wire and another one and another one and another one and I'm going to see if I can get four in a track uh, because one day I may decide to blow this up with an inflation fan. I don't know, but I, you know, if I can get four in there, then I can get two layers of plastic. And the reason I need four is because on the end, you got the end wall and the, the roof plastic go into one wiggle wire track. So anyway, that's about it in here. We'll go inside, hit the computer, and show you how I'm going about designing the new uh, roof for this thing. All right, the website that I use uh, to do a lot of the little designing and figuring out uh, things when I'm building them, like how many, you know, how much wood you need to build a wall, a deck, whatever else, is uh, blocklayer.com. And this is a free site, so uh, you're going you're gonna to have some pop-up uh, ads showing in here and stuff. Now, I've already done one design over here, but let me... Uh, which is this one uh, right here see if I can get and that's kind of what I'm going to have uh, I did some changes in there so I've got to come back and do some other stuff but uh, let's go back over here to this so typically when you start and you first come in here everything's going to be in metric and you just got to play back and forth it's sometimes glitchy so I've added where I'll select inch and uh, I've got to come over here and open up the hip roof a couple of times before or a gable a couple times before it'll do the gambrelli and uh, inch and we don't want this so we're close and so now we're in here we've got an inch this is where it defaults to right there so we're going to take our raptor depth and we're going to set that uh, to three and one half inches for a two by four. Now if you're going to use something different, you know, two by six, whatever else, this is where you're going to set how wide these boards are, what boards you're using. I'm going to use two by fours. Okay. I also wanted to show wall height. Now, uh, you'll see in a minute, like you said, when I come down here, it right now is showing, it's just sitting on, uh, like some uh, roof uh, rafters. So we're going to change this over first to feet. And I'm going to do a calculate, which is going to go ahead and throw in uh, the wall. We'll set the wall to six feet. And then I'm going to calculate that out and see if I can get this to go. Gonna set the bird's mouth to zero and the eave overhang to zero. Um, lower roof angle. Everything else. Let's see if we can calculate this as it All right, so there we go. We've got our initial starting point. Now we've got 72 uh, inches here, which we don't want. Uh, on our height and this is lower roof height so what we're going to do we're going to bring this down to let's see uh, 
three foot ten for this example, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to change this roof angle because I want it a little bit more symmetrical. I need to change just to 10 foot. That's why it's not working out right for me. So anyway, uh, I'm going to change that. I'm going to calculate again. And I'm going to change the upper roof angle. Kind of get where we're... I want to look like we're pretty close to the same angle. So that's 40 inches. Let's uh, take the lower bank. We're going to... For the sake of argument right now, I've got it at 42 and 42 and 23, 30 seconds. So this is going to be my, <coughs> my uh, layout that I'm going to use. So you just got to piddle around with this. Uh, if you got a bird's mouth and bird's mouth seat, it's not going to show the wall. It just won't do it. All right, so there's our raptor death. Now we're going to take our gussets. I'm going to take our gussets down to 16 inches. And this to zero. And then I'm going to have it show the gussets, which is there. We did the calculator, you can see that they came in. Now, on the uh, exterior uh, side of, of this, for both the front and the back, you use a full gusset, just like it's got here. The way I did it, I cut it and I dadoed out uh, the two by four so that the half inch plywood would sit down in there and everything would be flush right across here. So if we come down here we look at our gussets. These are the gussets. It's the mid gusset and the top gusset. That's what it's got on there. Now there again as you change angles and everything else to play with this to get it where you want it, it's going to automatically adjust all of these figures. So that's why it's kind of nice using this. It'll you know, even though you have to piddle with it and play with it, a little bit of time in this, a whole lot less, less time than hand designing this. So anyway, we're just going to go typically with this one for right now. I'm going to call this good. And uh, we're going to do that. Now, on the other side of this, because we're going to put a, uh, a purlin in, we're going to go inch and a half. I mean, yeah, an inch and a half thick for a two by four. And we're going to put a ridge in, inch and a half thick. So the ridge is up here, the purlins are here. And we're going to go ahead and calculate it again. You'll see that it threw them in there. So what's going to happen is when we get to the inside of this, these gussets won't be able to uh, be full and you don't want to really slide them because that's just a waste of wood so what I do is I just cut a strip across here is what I did and uh, like I said so as we let me let me change this uh, angle a little bit I like that a little bit better so 41 and 43 42 that's close enough I like that angle a little bit better and what it's telling me is that from the floor to down here, or from the bottom of the rafters to down here, it's going to be uh, 47 inches, and then we got our six foot. So if I just cut this off, I only put four foot pieces in here. That's going to give me an eight foot, uh, about an eight foot interior height between the bottom and up here. That's plenty high. Uh, got 120 inches wide, 10 feet. So let's go ahead and change this back to feet. And there's our feet and inches. Now, I'm going to turn the gussets off for a minute. And you're going to see the purlins in there. So it actually recalculates all that. And what's nice is it's changed these to where they'll fit the purlin in. And what you're going to notice when you see this, you've got it's the lower rafter and the upper rafter and this angle is different than that angle this angle is different than that angle 
But this angle and this angle are the same. Okay? This and this would be right here. Those are the same angles. So the lower one, this angle here, is that angle right there. And on the upper one, this angle right here is this angle up here. So once we've got that done, we've pretty well got this laid out. Got my 10 foot wide. The height I'm not worried about because I can change the height by just changing the legs. I'll also be throwing a purlin in here. So that's something I just add in. It's not, it doesn't do it on here, but I'll add that purlin in there so that I've got a flat piece down there. It gives it a little bit more strength. I'll also be making a, another gusset piece that goes across here. Now once we've done that, we can take this and export it as PDF. And we don't need all this uh, download report and all that stuff. Like I said, it's an ad supported site, so you're going to have to piddle with some ads. Uh, you can give it a different file name if you want. I just let it go. Came out the block layer, whatever. We're going to open that up. Okay, it's got the gussets on it. Okay. This one was a leftover thing and something else. I ain't worried about that. We'll go ahead and get that out of there. Now, we're going to go back to the original one that I did, which was right here. This is the one I'm actually going to build. There again, it's showing bird's mouth and all that stuff. I'm going to take the bird's mouth out and then recalculate it. And there, that's it. this is the one I'm building right here. And, uh, well, let me get that back to 10 feet. And this is three and one half. Okay, we're going to take these down to 16 inches. And then we're going to change our angle, our lower depth. And so this is what pretty close to the one I'm going to be building. Uh, I might change this a little bit, get it more even, 3, 8, 3, 5. So I've got this on here 10 feet wide. A wall height of 8, I can drop it to 6 if I want to really make a difference because you can't go below that. So this gives me all my dimensions in here. There's four foot two to the inside, all the stuff. So this is what I'm going to be building right there. So now it's just a matter of taking this, figuring out what I need in wood to build it. And I'll cover that probably in another video. Uh, I'll show you how to start putting all this together to make a materialist. Now the thing that I'm going to mention right now is we don't have a lot of spare money. We get a little here, get a little there, and stuff. So we're going to have to buy this material a little at a time. Uh, so I've got the wiggle wire track that's at least enough to do that. I'm going to buy the plastic. Uh, then I'm going to buy this because I want to be I want to rebuild this greenhouse probably sometime, uh, maybe June. July, it may go a little bit later, just depends on how hot it's going to be right here. And it gets really hot, and uh, I need to put my rafters and purlins in there. I forgot I didn't do that. Okay. So double check your stuff. I'm sitting here talking and forgetting that stuff. Okay, inch and a half. Recalculate. There they are. They're in there now. All right. So we got that. Like I said, I'll cover the amount of wood and everything else in another video that I'll make on this. But anyway, so this is how I'm going to do it. And uh, this is the design that I'm going to use for the actual greenhouse. Now a lot of people go, well, why don't you just go buy a uh, greenhouse kit? Well, uh, I can build this for a lot less. I mean, it's still going to be kind of pricey, but I can build it for a lot less than some of these greenhouse kits go for now that they're made out of metal. I mean, I don't have two, three, four thousand dollars 
for, that they want for some of these kits. And you get the little smaller ones like this. And they're made out of flimsy uh, metal and stuff. And I don't want that. This, the greenhouse that's out there right now has withstood 80 plus mile an hour winds with the plastic on it. And it didn't move. And so I know that it's a, a good design. The one thing I may do on this one, because it's a little wider, is I may come and take up, put a 2x4 in across here. And that'll give it a little bit more strength uh, in case I want to hang some stuff from up there. All right, so that's it on this. We're going to go ahead and uh, finish this up. And I'll see you in the next video.